Welcome, everybody. Really excited to talk to you today and share more about what Docker is doing to help make you faster, make your team faster, um, and turn your application delivery into something that makes you a 10x team. What we're hearing from you, the developers using Docker every day, fits across three common themes that we hear consistently over and over. We hear that your time is super important, it's critical, and you want to move faster, you want your tools to get out of your way and instead to enable you to accelerate and focus on the things you want to be doing. And part of that is that finding great content, great application components that you can incorporate into your apps to move faster is really hard. Uh, it's hard to discover. It's hard to find high quality content that you can trust that you know passes your tests, your configuration needs. Uh, and it's hard to create good content as well. And you're looking for more safety, more guardrails um, to help guide you along that way so that you can focus on creating value for your company. Secondly, you're telling us that it's really hard to collaborate effectively with your team and you wanna do more to work more effectively together to help your tools become more and more seamless to help you stay in sync, both with yourself across all of your development environments as well as with your teammates so that you can more effectively collaborate together, review each other's work, maintain things and keep them in sync. And finally, you want your applications to run consistently in every single environment, whether that's your local development environment, a cloud-based development environment, your CI pipeline, or the cloud uh, for production. And you want that microservice to provide that consistent experience everywhere you go so that you have similar tools, uh, similar environments, and you don't need to worry about things getting in your way, but instead things make it easy for you to focus on what you wanna do. And what Docker is doing to help solve all of these problems for you and your colleagues is creating a collaborative app dev platform. And this collaborative application development platform consists of multiple different pieces. I'm not going to walk through all of them today, uh, but the overall view is that we're providing all the tooling you need from the development environment to the container images, to the collaboration services, to the pipelines and integrations that enable you to focus on making your applications amazing and changing the world. If we start zooming on one of those aspects, collaboration, what we hear from developers regularly is that they're challenged in synchronizing their own setups across environments. They wanna be able to duplicate the setup of their teammates, that then they can easily get up and running with the same applications, the same tooling, the same versions, the same libraries, the same frameworks. Um, and they wanna know if their applications are good before they're ready to share them in, the, in an official space. They wanna collaborate on things before they're done rather than feeling like they have to officially publish something before they can effectively share it with others to work on it. To solve this, we're thrilled today to announce Docker Dev Environments. Docker Dev Environments transform how your team collaborates. They make creating and sharing standardized development environments as simple as a Docker pull. They make it easy to review your colleagues' work without affecting your own work. And they increase the reproducibility of your own work and decrease production issues in doing so because you've got consistent environments all the way through. Now I'm going to pass it off to our principal product manager, Ben Gotch, to walk you through more detail on Docker Dev Environments. Hi, I'm Ben. I work as a principal product manager at Docker. One of the areas that Docker has been looking at to see what's hard today for developers is sharing changes that you make from the inner loop, where the inner loop is that bit of development where you write code, test it, build it, run it, and ultimately get feedback on those changes before you merge them and try and actually ship them out to production. Most developers build this flow in Git. This still leaves a lot of challenges. People need to jump between branches to look at each other's work, and dependencies, dependencies can be different when you're doing that. And doing this in this new hybrid world of work isn't any easier either. The ability to just say to someone, hey, come and check this out, has become much harder. People can't come and sit down at your desk or take your laptop away for 10 minutes to just grab and look at what you're doing. A lot of the reason that development is hard when you're remote is that looking at changes and what's going on requires more than just code. It requires all the dependencies and everything you've got set up and that complete context of your development environment to understand what you're doing. And solving this in a remote first world is hard. We wanted to look at how we could make this better and to do that in a way that let you keep working the way you do today. We didn't want you to have to use a browser. We didn't want you to have to use a new IDE. And we wanted to do this in a way that was application centric. We wanted to let you work with all the rest of the application you're already using. So you've got all the services and all those dependencies you need as part of that. And with that, we're excited to talk more about Docker developer environments. 
Dev environments are a new part of the Docker experience that makes it easier for you to get started with your hole in the loop working inside a container. They allow you to share and collaborate more than just the code. We want to enable you to share your whole modern development environment, your whole setup from Docker with your team on any operating system. We'll be launching a limited beta of dev environments in the coming month. And at GA, dev environments will be ID agnostic and supporting Compose. This means that you'll be able to use and extend your existing Compose files to create your own development environment in whatever IDE you're working in. Dev environments are designed to be local first. They work with Docker Desktop and say your existing IDE and let you share that whole inner loop, that whole development context with all of your teammates in just one click. This means if you want to get feedback on a work in progress change or on a PR, it's as simple as opening another IDE instance and looking at what your team is working on. And because we're using Compose, you can just extend your existing Compose file, the one you're already working with, to actually create this whole application and have it all working in the context of the rest of the services. So it's actually the whole environment you're working with, not just that one service that doesn't really understand what it's doing alone. And with that, let's jump into a quick demo. So we can see here, we've got two dev environments up and running. The first one here is a single container dev environment. So if I want to go into that and see what's going on, hit the VS Code button, we have that one open, and I can get straight into my application and start making changes inside that dev container. I've got all my dependencies in here, so I can just run that straight in there. The second application I have here is one that's opened up in Compose, and I can see that I've also got my backend, my front end, and my database. So I've got all my services running here. So if I want, I can open one or more of these in a dev environment, meaning that that container has the context, that dev environment has the context of the whole application, so I can get back into and connect to all the other services that I need to test this application properly, all within one unit. And then when I've made my changes and I'm ready to share, I can hit my share button, type in the repo name I want to share that to, and then give that image to someone to get going, pick that up, and just start working with that code and all my dependencies, simple as pulling an image. Looking ahead, we're going to be expanding development environments for more of your dependencies for the whole developer workspace. We want to look at backing up and letting you share your volumes to make data science and database setups more repeatable. And we want to store all of this under a single workspace for your team containing your images, your dev environments, your volumes, and more. We really want to allow you to create a fully portable Linux development environment for everyone you're working with on any operating system. As I said, our MVP will be coming next month, and that will support VS Code using their dev container primitive, and more support for other IDEs will soon follow. To find out more about what's happening and what's coming up next in the future of this, and to actually get a bit of a deeper dive in the experience, come and check out the talk I'm doing with Georgie and Guillaume later on today. Thank you, Ben. Amazing story about how Docker is helping to make developer teams more collaborative. Now I'd like to talk more about applications. Um, while the dev environment is like the workbench around what you're building, the application itself is all the different components, libraries, and frameworks, and other code that make up the application itself. And we hear developers saying all the time, things like, how do they know if their images are good? How do they know if they're secure? How do they know if they're minimal? How do they make great images and great Docker files? And how do they keep their images secure and up to date? Um, every one of those ties into how do I create more trust? How do I know that I'm building high quality applications? To enable you to do this even more effectively than today, we are pleased to announce the Docker Verified Publisher Program. This broadens trusted content by extending beyond Docker official images to give you more and more trusted building blocks that you can incorporate into your applications. It gives you confidence that you're getting what you expect because Docker verifies every single one of these publishers to make sure they are who they say they are. This improves our secure supply chain story. And finally, it simplifies your discovery of the best building blocks by making it easy for you to find things that you know you can trust so that you can incorporate them into your applications and move on. And on the right, you can see some examples of the publishers that are involved in Docker official images and our Docker verified publisher program. Now I'm pleased to introduce you to Marina Kvitnitsky, our senior product manager, who will walk you through more about what we're doing to create a better experience for you around trusted content. Thank you, Donnie. Mario Andretti, who is a famous Italian sports car driver, once said that if everything feels under control, you're just not driving, you're not driving fast enough. 
Mario Andretti is not a software developer. And as software developers, we know that no matter how fast we need to go in order to drive the innovation that we're working on, we can never allow our applications to spin out of control. And at Docker, as we continue talking to our, our to the, the developers, what we're realizing is that in order to reach that speed, the developers are the, the, the development community is looking for the building blocks and the tools that will they will enable them to drive at the, the the speed that they need to go and have the trust in those uh, building blocks and in those tools that they will be able to maintain control over their applications. So as we think about some of the things that we can do to, to address those concerns, uh, we're realizing that we can pursue them in, in a number of different venues, including creating reliable content, including creating partnerships that expands the options for the reliable content. Um, in order, in, we're looking at creating integrations and building security tools. So as we talk about the reliable content, the first thing that comes to mind are the Docker official images, which is a program that we launched several years ago. And this is a set of curated, actively maintained open source images that uh, include uh, operating systems and uh, databases and programming languages. And it become immensely popular for, for, for creating the base layers of, of, the, image, of, of the different image, images and applications. And what we're realizing that uh, many developers are, instead of creating something from scratch, basically start with one of the official images for their basis and then build on top of that. And this program has become so popular that it now uh, makes up a quarter of all of the uh, Docker polls, which essentially ends up being uh, several billion polls every single month. As we look beyond what we can do for the open source, uh, we're very really on the open source uh, spectrum. We are very excited to announce that we're launching the Docker Verified Publishers Program, which is continuing providing the trust around the content, but now working with uh, some of the industry leaders uh, in multiple in, in, in multiple verticals across the entire technical spec across entire uh, high tech in order to provide you with more options of the images that you can use for building your applications. And it still comes back to trust that when you are searching for uh, content in Docker Hub and you see the verified publisher uh, badge, you know that this is this is the content that, that is part, that, that comes from one of our partners and you're not running the risk of pulling a malicious image from an imposter source. As we look beyond what we can do for, for providing the, the reliable content, we're also looking at some of the tools and the infrastructure that we can do uh, to create uh, security around the content that you're creating. So last year at the last, at the last year's DockerCon, we announced partnership with Sneak. And later on last year, we launched uh, Docker Desktop and Docker Hub vulnerability scans that allow you the options of writing scans in them along multiple points in your dev cycle. And in addition to providing you with information on the vulnerability on, on the vulnerabilities in, in your code, uh, it also provides you with uh, guidance on how to re remediate those vulnerabilities. But as we look beyond the vulnerability scans, we're also looking at some of the other things that we can do in order to, to uh, further ensure the, the integrity uh, and the security around your, image, your images. And with that, uh, later on this year, we're looking to uh, launch the scope personal access tokens. And instead of talking about them, I will simply show you what they look like. So if you can see here, this is my page in Docker Hub where I've created uh, four uh, tokens, uh, read, write, delete, read, write, read only, and public, re and public repo read only. So uh, earlier, Today I went in and I I logged in uh, with my read only token. And when you see when I'm going to pull an image, it's going to allow me to pull an image. Not a problem. Success. And then when I do the next step, I'm going to ask to to push an image into the same repo. 
uh, what you see is that it's going to give me an error message saying that the access is denied uh, because there is an additional authentication required. So these are the things that we're looking to add to our roadmap as we continue thinking about the things that we can do to provide um, to provide additional building blocks, content building blocks, uh, and, and, and tools to build the trust so that uh, Docker developers can code faster than Mario Andretti could ever imagine. Uh, thank you. Back to you, Donnie. Thank you, Marina. It's, it's amazing what you can do to improve the trusted content so that you can accelerate your development more and move more quickly, move more collaboratively, and build upon the great work of others. Finally, we hear over and over as that developers are working on their applications that they're looking for environments that are consistent, that are the same as production, and that they want their applications to really run anywhere, any environment, any architecture, any cloud. One great example is the recent announcement of Apple Silicon. We heard from developers an uproar that they needed Docker to be available for that architecture before they could move to it and be successful. And we listened. And based on that, we are pleased to share with you Docker Desktop on Apple Silicon. This enables you to run your apps consistently anywhere, whether that's developing on your team's latest dev hardware, deploying an ARM-based cloud environment and having a consistent architecture across your development and production, or using multi-architecture support, which enables your whole team to collaborate on its application using private repositories on Docker Hub. And I'm thrilled to introduce you to Yui Kaur, Senior Director for Product Management, who will walk you through more of what we're doing to create a great developer experience. Thanks, Donnie. I'm Yui Kao, Senior Director of Product Management at Docker. And I'd like to jump straight into a demo. This is the new Mac Mini with the Apple Silicon processor. And I want to show you how you can now do an end-to-end -end ARM workflow from my M1 Mac Mini to Raspberry Pi. As you can see, we have VS Code and Docker Desktop installed on my M1 Mac Mini. We have a small example here. And I have a Raspberry Pi 3 with an LED strip. And I want to turn those LEDs into a moving rainbow. This Docker file here builds the application. We build the image with the docker buildx command to make the image compatible for all Raspberry Pis. With the ARM64 part of this build is built with the native power of the M1 chip. I also add the push option to easily share the image with my team so they can give it a try too. Now, Docker creates the local image with the application and uploads it to Docker Hub. After we've built and pushed the image, we can go to Docker Hub and see the new image. On Docker Hub, you can also explore a variety of images that are compatible with ARM processors. Now, let's go to the Raspberry Pi. I have Docker already installed, and it's running Ubuntu 64-bit. With the docker run command, I can run the application. And let's see what will happen from there. You can see Docker is downloading the image automatically from Docker Hub. And when it's running, it works right. There are some nice colors. And with that, if we have an end-to-end -end workflow for ARM. We're continuing to invest into providing you a great developer experience that's easy to install, easy to get started with. As you saw in the demo, if you're interested in the new Mac Mini or interested in developing for ARM platforms in general, we've got you covered with the same experience you've come to expect from Docker. With over 95,000 ARM images on Hub, including many Docker official images, we think you'll find what you're looking for. Thank you again to the community that helped us to test the tech previews. We're so delighted to hear when folks say that the new Docker desktop for Apple Silicon, it just works for them. But that's not all we've been working on. As Donnie mentioned, consistency of developer experience across environments is so important. We're introducing Compose V2 that makes Compose a first-class citizen in the Docker CLI. You no longer need to install a separate Compose binary in order to use Compose. Deploying to production is simpler than ever with the new Compose integration that enables you to deploy directly to Amazon ECS or Azure ACI with the same methods you use to run your application locally. If you're interested in running slightly different services when you're debugging versus testing or in 
um, just general development. You can manage that all in one place with the new Compose service profiles. To hear more about what's new on Docker Desktop, please join me in the 315 breakout session this afternoon. And now I'd love to tell you a bit more about Buildex and convince you to try it if you haven't already. It's our next gen build command and it's no longer experimental. As shown in the demo, with Buildex, you'll be able to do multi-architecture builds, share those builds with your team and the community on Docker Hub. With Buildex, you can speed up your build processes with remote caches or build all the targets in your compose file in parallel with Buildex Bake, and there's so much more. If you're using Docker Desktop or Docker CE, you can use Buildex. Check out Tonus's talk this afternoon at 345 to learn more about Buildex. And with that, I hope everyone has a great DockerCon and back over to you, Donnie. Thank you, Yui. It's amazing to hear about what we're doing to create a better developer experience and make sure that Docker works everywhere you need it to work. Finally, I'd like to wrap up by showing you everything that we've announced today and everything that we've done recently to make your lives better and give you more and more for the single price of your Docker subscription. We've announced the Docker Verified Publisher Program. We've announced scoped personal access tokens to make it easier for you to have a secure CI pipeline. We've announced Docker Dev Environments to improve your collaboration with your team. Uh, we've shared with you Docker Desktop and Apple Silicon to make sure that you know Docker runs everywhere you need it to run. And we've announced Docker Compose version two, finally making it a first class citizen amongst all the other great Docker tools. And we've done so much more recently as well, from audit logs to advanced image management to compose service profiles to improve where you can run Docker more easily. Finally, as we look forward, um, where we're headed in the upcoming year is continuing to invest in these themes of helping you build, share, and run modern apps more effectively. We're going to be doing more to help you create a secure supply chain, with, which only grows more and more important as time goes on. We're going to be optimizing your update experience to make sure that you can easily understand the current state of your application, all its components, and keep them all current without worrying about breaking everything as you're doing so. Um, we're going to make it easier for you to synchronize your work using cloud sync features. We're going to improve collaboration through dev environments and beyond. Um, and we're going to make it easy for you to run your microservice in your environments without worrying about things like architecture or differences between those environments. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled about what we're able to do to help make your lives better. And now you're going to be hearing from one of our customers about what they're doing to launch their business with Docker.